Uh, I'm going to give this just to you. Thank you. Thank you. This is an awkward time. If my ears get red, this is because I'm doing public speaking. Now that I've addressed this, we can all be uncomfortably comfortable together. All right. So, I grew up in a divided household where my mom was a believer and my dad was not. Mom being from an evangelical family, dad being from a communist family. You can imagine the dynamics. Born in the Soviet Union, I came here in the States when I was around eight. So at the around, uh, at the around age of ten, I remember being feared into internal damnation and hell if I don't repent for my sins in these last days. Why 2K, right? You can imagine the hype. In 1999, 12 years old, I responded to an altar call to repent for my sins and a few years later got baptized. But all of this was without a clear understanding of the gospel in terms of what Jesus did on my behalf. Therefore, my church life was all performance-based on how I can please my parents and my congregation. Although I did these things formalities, I was still living in sin, pursuing the things of the world and the desires of the flesh. I was good at hiding my sacred sinful life. I read the Bible daily, but more out of satisfaction that I read for that day without understanding much. The true faith transformation came in February of 2005 when I attended the very first Resolved Conference, um, conference uh, run by Grace Community Church with all those guys. Anyway, there I was awakened to the reality of my sinfulness paralleled with the truth of the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Terms like justification, sanctification were new to me. But after it was thoroughly explained to me in the light of the gospel, the true repentance came as I understood, believed, and trusted in the work of Jesus Christ on my behalf rather than on my own performance. I've changed in many ways after attending that conference. My speech changed, my evangelism changed, even my content of my rap songs changed. I read and studied my Bible in much more diligent manner. My further continual change was fueled by my thirst to hear more of God's word that was revealed to me through the countless of hours I spent listening to the expositional teaching by the same preachers from the Resolve Conference. And by the grace of God that sustained me for a long time. I have a hard-headed character, and since I was never disciplined or discipled by anyone in my former church, much of my sanctification uh, came at a much slower pace. When I was rebuked or uh, admonished by someone, I always had an argumentative spirit, but one thing that I noticed is that I always demanded to hear answers in the very sound explanation of the things from the Word of God. And... Um, as a result of those confrontations, uh, it was brought me to my knees seeking the truth and studying God's word even more. Above any man-made traditions or philosophies, I started to highly, highly value the authority of scripture. It became so dear to me because when it is faithfully preached in its proper context through sound exposition, it truly convicts and changes lives and as it did continually and does to me. At the end of 2011, I stopped reading my Russian Bible. Because frankly, I didn't understand much of it, <laughs> um, uh, just on the surface level. But in, at the end of 2011, I went on Crossway's website, the Crossway same publisher that Corey is reading from, and along with a few other life-changing books, I got myself my first ESV Bible that I still use to this day. And I, and I read the books, and, and the new Bible was such enjoyment as it refreshed my soul in a brand new way because I was able to finally understand what I'm reading. Coupled with some Grudem, weekly Saturday morning young men's breakfast, it was like a new life began. Later on, the clear evidence that God was working in my life is that I took rebuke with joy. <laughs> I appreciate it when people are with care and a loving approach boldly tell me the truth and speak into my life with convicting words of admonishment. I only know it does good. As it says in Hebrews 12, 11, my favorite life verse, for the moment all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So with that verse being my motto, in 2014, I made an audacious decision to move to San Diego to help a friend plant the church. God took me to various means of discipline by crushing and restoring me, shedding my identity, humbling me in a very good way, resulting to finally see how much puffed up I was with knowledge, but a little of it was really applied to my heart. I lost my spot. Are the ears red? Uh... Okay, cool. So there I was blessed to have what I never had in my life any, anywhere else, right? Uh, because 
You had faithful men who poured into my life, discipling me, loving me, healing me from a lot of anger, bitterness, self-doubt. I mean, these means these names mean nothing to you, but Jake McDonald, Dan Mason, Cameron Moberg, Jean Kisilov, they opened up their homes, right? And they're kind of heroes on my on my on my list of faith people. They they and their families allowed me in their homes uh, to live with them for periods of time, observing their Christian life from day to day manner. Um, and it, it was these examples that helped me see Christian living at the street level. This yielded much good fruit of righteousness, self-control, love, compassion, and further zealousness for the gospel. And most importantly, the freedom to know that my identity is in Jesus Christ. Not in anything else I am or what I do, but only in Jesus Christ. So while in San Diego, as part of this church plant, um, I was working as a freelance creative but the more I freelanced, the more traveling it required, going up and down the West Coast in search of the next gig. And that kind of led me to miss having a consistent community of believers around me. And I ended up back in the Bay Area after forsaking that freelance life and getting a job there. So shortly after I married Darina, whoop, whoop, um, when, um, so when we were in the process of becoming members at the local church there in uh, San Leandro, or where were we? Castro Valley, then it changed to San Leandro because of COVID. And that's another story. But Gateway Bible Church, the, the, uh, the elders asked me, were you uh, like previously repented and did you get baptized before? And I'm like, uh, it's a little complicated, kind of. But that was all done just to please my parents, get them off my back. And I didn't even understand the gospel doing it. So not really having a faith of my own. So what should I do, get baptized? So after a few weeks, the elders came back and said, yeah, let's get you baptized. So that it's clear you're making the public profession of your faith on your own desire, not f someone forcing you to do it. So 2018, I got baptized. A test came, that's another story. But in the years that followed, we had a few kids born. And I am on this new chapter of sanctification as uh, my kids helped me notice my anger, um, <coughs> impatience, laziness, selfishness, and more of that hard-headed stubbornness. So towards the end of 2021 we moved here and have seen nothing but love and family like care from this church not only to me but my transient uh, immigrant refugee friends um, but even um, here we've noticed that you've been very intentional with us and it's been a great blessing as we shared meals cried laughed prayed worshiped together i look forward to being part of this church to grow to serve for as long as the lord lives for his glory and I kind of want to end with this quote, like, I'm a piece of work, I need some work. Um, if you see a fault in me, please, like, we got to dig. And that's the quote I want to leave with. You got to dig. Hold me accountable. Call me on my laziness. Call me by my birth name. Look me in the face and dig. And if I ever lose sight, come and get me. You got to dig. I'm not as animated as Alexi. <laughs> I'll be in one spot here. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Darina Dolotov. Um, ever since I can remember, our home was filled with scripture reading, prayer, and singing hymns, which my mother loved. My parents always held, a, held God in high esteem, even as they went through trials of various kinds. My father held regular morning devotions and initiated discussions at the dinner table questioning and testing things according to scripture, what is good and what is true. As he matured in the word, he was more and more willing to be teachable, even by his own children. Thanks to their exam life example, I learned to love and fear God above man. The gospel seemed important as I attended church all my life, but not something I had sleepless nights over. As I started choosing my paths in life, I realized God is something more than the topic of Christian sermons hearing that God is a personal God and wants a relationship with each individual was nothing new to me, but it started to have meaning as I grew in my faith and knowledge of the gospel. After what I thought was a true conversion, I worked on sinning less and did my best to please God, but easily fell short of that mission. Since my attempts were a disappointing failure, I gave up trying to perform by my own strength and asked God to change my heart. I started to understand Galatians 2.16 which says, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the f faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For 
by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. A couple of months before my 13th birthday, I had a chance to admire the starry night and quietly meditate. As the Holy Spirit worked to convict me of my sinful state, I came to realize that I needed God's forgiveness and mercy to blot out my, my many transgressions through the work of his son, Jesus Christ. His love overwhelmed the guilt of my sins as I confessed my burdens to him. It gave me a sense of joy and peace that truly surpasses all understanding. After my conversion and baptism, I was very eager to tell others about the wonderful Jesus I encountered and had much to grow in the knowledge of his word. Our family left the Romanian church, which we grew up in, and moved to Emmanuel Baptist Church, where I started to hear the gospel in English and understood it better. I also started reading the English Bible at that time. <laughs> Marriage and parenting have further exposed my sinful nature and is a constant area of growth in my life. And I really like Ephesians 4, 22 to 24. Put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. I've grown in my understanding of the gospel since the evening of my repentance. Although it was a weak beginning, it, it is still a testimony that God deserves all the glory for saving me. As I discovered the richness of God's word and fellowship with other believers, it is now a growing pleasure in my life. I find gold, gold country to be faithful in preaching and teaching the true gospel and would like to commit myself to this local church. All right. Stay up here for just a minute. Thank you both. Thank you for sharing what God's done in your lives. And uh, we're so thankful to get to know you. And my wife has gotten to know Darina. And Alexia and I have talked about rap music and coffee a little bit. He actually, he likes rap music. So he's mine and Phil's best bud now. Did you know Phil raps? Yeah. Are you going to, are you going to family camp? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's good. Yeah. He's good. You should. Yeah, you'll, f you'll find camp. out whether it's good or not, but no, it's good, it's good. A uh, couple of questions for you. What are your children's names? The older one is Miriam. She turned four last okay. week. And are they The younger right one now? is Daniel. He's one and a half. Miriam and Daniel. Yes. Great. And uh, what do you do for work? Can I, you I sit at home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Literally, I sit at home, do remote video work. Okay. Yeah. We know what you do for work. You're a mommy. Yeah. Yes. Full, full time mom. It is hard work. <laughs> it's good work. It's important work. Uh, and where where do your families live now? Your your extended families, your folks, and all that. Dorina. They both live in Sacramento. Actually. Okay. Sacramento. Both of your sets of families do. Yeah. My okay. my parents are from the West Sac Sacramento. Okay. They're from the East Side. Oh. <laughs> Dueling families. All right. And you never know. Some, you have some guests here with you as well, right? Some friends. Yeah. Do you want yeah. to introduce them just from here? That'd be great. Um, I guess I'm their adopted San Diego resident. Okay. Um, <laughs> they're, they're no longer San Diego, but it's Daniel Mason and Tammy Mason. Okay. They're good people. So A good uh, family you can role model and sweet. follow. Dan, I think I heard his name in the kind of the list of people that you mentioned. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Dan, well, you were in there, I'm sure. Yeah. Alexis is confirming, but uh, great. It's great to have you all with us. Uh, I'll just put it to you. Any any questions you have for Darina? Or, this isn't like a theological girl session or anything like that, but any questions about their life or their family or anything from you all? Favorite cheese? Excuse me? <laughs> what is your favorite tea? Also, what is your favorite cheese? <laughs> Do you have a favorite... Tea? Yeah, we did have a cheese discussion the other, the other day. Oh, well, my kids like mozzarella. Mozzarella. All kids so like that's mozzarella. That's what we have. <laughs> okay. Do you have a favorite tea? I like Earl Grey. Earl Grey tea. Um, they, they don't longer sell anymore, but if you want to try some, you can come over my house. Uh, it's the Trader Joe's watermelon mint black tea. It's oh, to die that, for. That is a curveball from a Slavic brother. It's a good one. That's a curveball. Yeah. Watermelon mint black tea. It's, Watermelon it's mint. Okay. It's very good. All right. Any any one other question? Okay, Carol. My yeah, it's a, it's a long story. So we're praying for your he family. He goes to church, but okay. I mean, I'm not talking to him right now. Help me out with okay. that. If you can give me some parental guidance, it'll be it'll be helpful. Okay. 
Og øh, ja. Ja. Ja, okay. Uh, okay. One question. Is there, is there a book that both of you have read that has impacted your life, encouraged your hearts, uh, helped you? You mentioned Wayne Grudem's system. Together? Like, yeah, uh, either. If there's a book you've read together I'll start or any Dorian, book. you can start. A current book that I'm reading is For the Love of Discipline that I got from the Women's Conference. Oh. It's been life-changing so far. Oh, wow. For the Love of Discipline. Who's yeah. it by? I forgot her name. Okay. For the Love of Discipline. But you'd And it was from the Women of Grace Conference. Okay, great. For the love of discipline. Okay, good. So in 2011, when I got that ESV Bible, there's other selection of books, not read them. Um, there's a little book called by jo Joe Thorne. Mm. Um, and the book is called Note to Self. That book totally flipped my mind, world upside down, when I realized I should stop pretending in a church to be as real as I could be. Mm. I kind of became, a lot of anger came out as I was dealing with it, but I was being real. <laughs> um, but that book is a great book that totally uh, impacted me where I, I, I understood that, like, it's a very proud thing to put up a front, and it takes a lot of humility to just, to just you know, not lie when someone asks you how you're doing. And I'm like, <laughs> another quote, a Pacific Northwest artist, he goes like this. I got it because it's so powerful. If you see me at a fetal position, I'm not okay. If you ask me how I'm doing better, be prepared to pray. Maybe you should walk away because you don't really know me. Blessed are the despised, feeble, and the lowly. So that book kind of, it was the catalyst to really um, be uh, transparent with people. And in the act of just really being real with people, then that helped other people to pour into you. Where I feel like, So many times we could put up a front. So we rob ourselves and we also rob others the opportunity to serve me. Not that it has to be a selfish thing, it'll serve me, right? Yeah. But uh, I think when we have humility and transparency with each other like that, it, it does great things for That's the good. body. Yeah, thanks. So note Joe to Thorne, self. Note to self, chapter 14. And for the love of discipline. Good. All right, well, that's sweet to just get a little snapshot of some of those things. Yes. Uh, Phil, would you come and pray for them, brother? And let's, uh, let's commit to pray for them regularly and then uh, get to know them as well. And feel free to invite them into your homes, have a meal with them, some mint, watermelon, onion tea. Onion. Uh, I forgot the third ingredient, but black, black tea. Oh, okay. Uh, wonderful. Phil, thanks, brother. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your grace in our lives and how you call us, how you change us, how you reveal not only Christ to us, but you re reveal ourself and our, our sin and our, our selfishness. And Lord, we who are parents in this room can identify to how uh, getting married but then having children, how that just shows us more and more our need for you. And so thank you even for that reminder and the, the openness and transparency that has that is continuing to be at work in their life and needs to be at work in our lives. Uh, we thank you for how you've uh, brought them here and, and even together um, and how you are have brought them to our church family here and uh, just thank you for their family and their little ones and help us as families in this family of Christ to, to be uh, faithful to um, to be good friends, to speak truth and love to them as they've asked for that, and to um, also be open and transparent with them about our lives as well. We thank you for these things and ask your continued growth and, and blessing on them as a couple, as parents, and in uh, in their kids. We pray that you would save them, draw them to yourself, and, and uh, we pray for uh, any unsaved family as well. Um, who in their extended families, there are some who they don't know for sure if they're saved, or some that are not professing Christ. So we pray, Lord, that you might use them and use others to speak your your gospel and to show the love of Christ to them. And we just uh, thank you for these uh, reminders and the, these encouragements to hear your your grace. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.